tell you a Scottish folk tale about a huge stone that lies in the middle of the River Clyde. It's called the Carlin Stain. The word Carlin means an old woman or a witch. There's even an old Lanarkshire rhyme that says that this stain has its own mermaid. The mermaid sat on the Carlin stain, a came in her gowden hair. There may ne'er was in Clydesdale wide was ever half so fair. The story is sometimes called Whoopity Story, but the version that I'm going to tell you is called The Good Wife of Tilly Tudlam. And it's based on another version of the tale by Ewan McVicker called The Name Game. Once, in the hills behind the village of Tilly Tudlam, lived a woman called Nan with her little baby who was called Donald. Donald's daddy had gone to market one day and never come back. So they lived alone except for a few chickens and their pig. Their pig was called Grunty Grice. Every year Grunty Grice had a litter of piglets and Nan would sell them at market and with the money she made from the piglets that would keep her and Donald for the year. One morning Nan went out into the orchard to feed Grunty Grice her breakfast. She called out as she always did. Grunty Grice, Grunty Grice, I have brought you something nice. Usually, Grunty Grice would come running out of her pigsty and gobble up all of her piggy breakfast. But today, she didn't appear. So Nan called again. Grunty Grice, Grunty Grice, I have brought you something nice. Still no pig. Nan went over to the pigsty and she bent down and looked inside. Oh! Grunty Grice was lying on her back with all her legs in the air. She was panting for breath and she looked very pale. Oh no, my poor pig is sick. Whatever will I do? Oh, somebody help me, please. And then Nan said something that maybe she shouldn't have said. I would give anything, anything in the world to make my pig better. As soon as she said those words, a small figure appeared on the hill behind the house and it started coming down towards Nan and the sick pig. It was a wee old woman dressed all in black, with black pointy hat and black pointy shoes. But as she moved her legs, her knees made a very odd noise. Her left knee made the sound, na. Nah! And her right knee made the sound ra. So when she walked, it sounded like na ra na ra na ra. The little woman went straight up to the pigsty. She took a black bottle out of her pocket. She bent down to Grunty Grice, and she took the stopper off. And a terrible stink filled the air. And then she dropped three drops of purple liquid into Grunty Grice's ear. No sooner had the liquid seeped into the pig's ear than Grunty Grice jumped up onto her four trotters. The colour came back to her cheeks and she ran to her breakfast and gobbled it all up. Nan jumped for joy. Thank you very much. You have made my pig better. Oh my goodness, that means so much to me. I must repay you. What can I give you for making my pig better? The little old woman stared Nan in the eye and grinned a smile of black broken teeth. Oh, now let me see. Nan suddenly thought, I could give you fresh eggs, the tastiest in all of Tilly Tudlam. But the little woman wrinkled up her nose. Ugh. Oh, said Nan. OK, um, oh, I could give you... A fresh loaf, freshly baked bread. It's delicious. But the little woman shook her head. No! Oh, I'm running out of things to give you. And then Nan remembered. Oh, she said, I know. 
I made a fresh, tasty fruit cake for me and baby Donald for our Christmas. I could give you the fruit cake. But the little woman shook her head furiously. I don't want eggs. I don't want bread. I don't want fruit cake. You said you would give anything, anything in the world to make your pig better. So I want you to give me your baby. Give me your baby. Nan went pale with fright. You want my baby? Oh, no, you can't have baby Donald. And then Nan realised this little old woman dressed all in black must be a witch. Because who else would be wicked enough to want to take her baby? Nan shouted at the witch. No, you can't have my baby. I challenge you to the name game. Nan knew that every witch has got a secret name. And if you can guess their secret name, then the witch has no power over you. The little witch smiled again. <laughs> oh, the name game. Yes, that's my favourite game. It's fun. If you can guess my secret name, then I can't take your baby. So go on, guess my secret name if you think you can. No, said Nan, I know the rules. I have 24 hours to guess your secret name. Come back tomorrow. It was true. Those were the rules. So the little old witch, scowling, stared hard at Nan and said, Right then, I'll be back tomorrow. And away she hobbled out of the orchard and back up the hill, her left knee croaking, Nah! And her right knee squawking, Ra! So as she walked, it sounded like, Nah! Ra! Nah! Ra! Nah! Ra! Nah! Ra! Nah! Ra! Nah, and she disappeared over the top of the hill. Nan ran away down to the village of Crossford and she knocked on all of her neighbours' doors and asked them in turn, had they ever seen a little old woman dressed all in black with a black pointy hat and black pointy shoes, whose left leg made the noise na, whose right leg made the noise ra, and when she walked it sounded like na, ra, na, ra, na, ra. Nah, rah. But each neighbour shook their head and said, Oh no, we've never seen anybody like that around here. Finally, Nan had called on every house and she'd even gone along the Clyde Valley through the next village of Hazelbank until she reached the very last house in the village. That was where the oldest and wisest man in the whole Clyde Valley lived. And when Nan asked him if he'd ever seen the little old witch, his eyes lit up. Oh, he says, now just a moment, dear. That is bringing back an old memory. When I was a wee lad, about nine years old, I loved to go with my fishing rod down to the River Clyde. I'd walk along to the Carlinstein and there I'd fish for brown trout in the shade of the huge rock. But one summer's day, when I was going along the banks of the Clyde, I saw the strangest sight. There, sitting on the edge of the Carlinstein, was a wee woman, just like you, described all in black with a pointy hat. But her black pointy shoes weren't they on her feet. No, they were on the rocks. And the wee woman, she was sitting on the Carlinstein, dangling her feet in the river and washing her dirty toes. Aye, she was washing the muck off her tootsies and she was singing the most peculiar wee song. Now, how did it go? Ah, I'm washing my feet on the carlin stain and nobody knows my secret name. It's a funny old game, but Kittle and Clapperdon is my name. Aye, it's a funny old game, cos Kittle and Clapperdon is my name. Nan jumped for joy. That must be the witch's secret name. Thank you. Tomorrow I'll come back and I'll bring you fresh eggs, some lovely fresh bread and a big slice of fruitcake. Nan went back home 
happy that she knew the witch's secret name and now the witch couldn't hurt her or baby Donald. But have you ever heard a name like Kitlin Clapperdin? Well, Kitlin is an old Scottish word that means kitten. Clapper, a clapper is the little bit of metal inside a bell that makes it ding. And din, din's an old Scots word that means a big noise. So Kitlin Clapperdin roughly means noisy kitten. Nan went to bed that night secure and confident that the witch could not get baby Donald from her. And Nan slept so well that the first thing she heard in the morning was knock, knock, knock. It was the witch at her front door. Nan had slept in. She pulled on her apron and she opened the door. There stood the wee old witch, smiling at her. I've come for your baby, unless you can guess my secret name. Come on then, guess it if you can. Nan went to say the witch's secret name and then she realised she had completely forgotten. It had gone in her sleep. Oh, oh, something to do with cats, she thought. Something to do with cats. Is it Telltale Pussycat? The witch cackled. No, it isn't. Hand over the baby. No, said Nan. The rules are I get three guesses. So just a minute. Nan thought hard. Something to do with talking cats. Kittens, chattering kittens. Is it Big Mouth Bodrons? The witch cackled again. No, no, it isn't. <laughs> you have one guess left. If you don't guess my secret name this time, I get to take Baby Donald and your pig. Come on, hurry up. Nan thought and thought as hard as she could. She racked her brains and it popped back into her head. Your name is Kitlin Clapperdin. The witch screamed in fury. Ah, how did you know my secret name? How did you guess it? She jumped on her broomstick in a terrible temper and shot up into the air. She was so angry, her blood began to boil and she was blind with rage. Her broomstick took a wrong turn and because it couldn't cross over the River Clyde, no witch can cross over running water, the broomstick crashed into the Carlin stain. Some people say that was the end of Kitlin Clapperdon and she was never seen again. But other folk say that sometimes you can hear her. She's still sitting, stuck in the middle of the Carlin stain, washing her dirty feet and singing silly wee songs. Nan got to keep baby Donald and her pig and they all lived happily in the hills behind the village of Tilly Tudlam. <laughs>